The beginning of an NLL season requires a solid commitment. A commitment to a grueling campaign of physicality. A commitment to exceed your expectations as an athlete. A commitment through your image to represent the franchise. And above all else, a commitment to your teammates. It's never about the name on the back, but the crest on the front. Acknowledging these commitments with your teammates builds the foundation to find success together. And now the festivities begin! It was actually Dan's idea preseason, but it was more or less to talk about our reason, you know, why we play the game and who we're playing for. And you know, everyone's got a story, you know, somebody who sacrificed a lot to get them to where they are today and um, helps you bring the team closer together and, um, you know, what makes them tick and what, what motivates them to be here every day. It's been over a decade since the Toronto Rock last won an NLL championship. It is an all Canadian matchup, Vancouver and Toronto right here from Hamilton. Right? And do everything that you can. Right? And I, you know, one thing I didn't mention this morning, I'm always chasing wins. Like, that's what I love. I love that feeling after, you know, as, as a, a player first and now as a coach, you know, when you get together and you go out and you battle and you lay it on the line and you do all the little things that you have to do, and then you get to come back in here and, and enjoy it, right? Let's put everything in, on the line here tonight. Let's go and let's have some fun and let's get after it. It wasn't even close! That's a terrible call! Rogers to small, scores! The Rock are rolling! Extend however we want to play it, just like as it swings, don't just start napping and watch the ball get swung. Be ready, because that's when they hit it if it's timed well, right? You know, really in this situation, we've all been there. It can be real easy to say, ah, we're up by f and 10, I'm going to sit behind this seal and not fight through. Or I'm going to go and pursue this loose ball when my responsibility is and head home, all right? So your goal in this situation is to play the game properly each and every shift, do it over and over and over, and then you just eliminate them, all right? Let's get back to doing what we have to do. Let's go here. Back for halftime, The Rock leading by nine, 13 to four. Shriver, shot, score! Neal to the five hole. Keo scores! Andrew Ecclestone is calling a penalty shot. Vancouver defender is guilty of using his hand to touch the ball inside the crease. Automatic penalty shot. They're going to give it to the captain, Challen Rogers, and why wouldn't you? Rogers one on one with Steve Pryor, the penalty shot. Nice and wide. Rogers, fake, scores! What a fake from the captain. And he buries it. 16. Now running is Brad Cree on a breakaway. Brad Cree! Scores! And the Toronto Rock are going to start the 2022-2023 season with a convincing 19-8 win over the Vancouver Warriors. Where's the Turf Monsters? Just a great day with the guys here. What a great day. Uh, nice, uh, nice first uh, first game. Obviously, uh, lots of good stuff out there, top to bottom. Everybody uh, uh, did their part. 
Um, you know, that's one game, but we talked about starting on the right foot. Obviously, we got some stuff to work on. We felt we were the better team. You guys came out and kind of imposed that on them, and, and you saw the result. Good job. Um, you know, and that's just, uh, um, we've been at this, I don't know exactly what, 30 days or four weeks, and, you know, all that work that we've put in uh, takes you to tonight. So enjoy that. I would encourage you guys to stick together as a group here tonight, and uh, um, don't end right now. So hell of a job. We get back to work Tuesday night. Good work, boys. <laughs> Last one, guys. Uh, what a moment to share with each other this morning. And, and to say we won that way is it, just a show of our character. But there, there's someone missing from this flag. And he's a guy who, who did a guaranteed win night because he put this team together and he knew what he had. He knew what he had. He doubled down on us. And that's not a cocky thing. It's not a cocky thing. It's, it's a confidence thing. He believed in us and he's the last one to sign this flag. And it goes to him tonight. What's your why and who, who you do this? Well, listen, man, I, I, do the, I do this for everyone. I do this for the logo right there. I do it for my family. I do it for you guys, man. I mean, there's nothing more that I, that I enjoy than this group winning, and, and everyone gets great enjoyment from that. So, you know, that's the greatest satisfaction I get. And, and uh, you know, tonight was special, man. That was really good. And, and this, this is a marathon, not a sprint. You know, you go into the game tonight a little nervous. Like, I, I believe in this team. I believe, like, I expect you to do what you did tonight. I really do, but you don't know. It's a new season. It's a new what. But I said to Maddie and Bruce this morning, so this kind of group seems a little different to me. And, you know, this is a special group. I want it to be done with a special group. Let's just, let's just continue the process, man. That was a great start. I'm really proud of you guys. It was awesome. Thank you. Good first half. Throw down team. Great team down there. That's who you want to do it for. Lastly, someone hit a milestone today. Thank you. Fun fucking day, boys. Doesn't stop. Right back at it Tuesday, but let's enjoy that fucking win, right? Yeah. Great job. Rock on three. One, two, three. Rock! You know, that was the talk at, uh, at the half. From a coaching standpoint, you're battling with that, right? Uh, I think it was 13-4. It's yeah. tough to make them uh, believe that uh, you still got to, uh, you know, take care of the little things, and that's what we stress. In that situation, you know, what is your job? It's to uh, um, just play the game the right way. Don't get lazy on offense. Don't get lazy on defense. And um, easier said than done. Um, but I thought for the most part we, we stuck with it, and, and um, it was a good start to finish. Not too bad? You're hanging in there? Oh boy. Slater's always feeling good, right? Yeah. Much tougher opponent here to, uh, this, uh, this Saturday. We turn the page, focus on, uh, on Rochester. Let's have a good outing here tonight and uh, um, start working towards this Saturday. Okay, that's all I got. That's all you got, eh? That's all I got. Rock on three, one, two, three. Rock! Rock. Sometimes that happens, right? You hear about it. Compensating and shit. Right. Well, other than that, I feel really good, so. Right. You just gotta stay on top of it, right? Eat right and do what you can here. Get as light as you can for when you're ready. Yeah. yeah. He just said he felt it, so he shut it down, which is good. We'll have to make, make a move, right? Make a roster move. Last year's NLL Defensive Player of the Year, Mitch DeSnew, has committed to a career of medical research outside the game. Yeah, it's a bit hectic. He's very good at balancing everything. Just like the most disciplined person that I know and is able to kind of compartmentalize everything and do like, the task at hand at whatever time he needs to. So it's impressive, really. Yeah, I think routine is important. <laughs> I don't know if my dad wanted me to be a baseball player, uh, but they never actually put it in. I think we stopped playing in the backyard once I uh, could hit the ball far enough that it could damage his truck. He, yeah, he was the one that was always taking me to hockey, lacrosse. Like he was my hockey coach when I was playing house league um, up until I, yeah, started aging out and moving up levels. Um, yeah, so I have a lot of good memories of him. Uh, yeah, coaching me, and he was always very 
excited for it. Um, the way that his symptoms progressed, uh, like it's a slow moving disease, so there were a lot of good times. Yeah, and he always cared right to the end. So growing up, uh, my mom was a nurse, and so that was sort of my exposure to medicine. So she gave me an idea about like what it means to be a physician. And then I guess when I was, I think 12 years old, my dad was diagnosed with Parkinson's. Like I didn't uh, really know what that meant at the time, uh, but it just seemed bad. And then sort of growing up more and more, I thought that the only route was medicine. But then after undergrad, I did a, sort of got a better understanding of what it means to be a scientist and to, and like the differences between medicine and science, whereas medicine is about treating patients and using the things that you have now, whereas science is developing new tools and understanding. Mitch is currently earning his PhD doing lab work at SickKids in Toronto. In my current lab, I'm supervised by uh, Dr. Paul Franklin uh, at SickKids, and he runs a combination lab with himself and his wife, uh, Dr. Sheena Jocelyn, and we all research the basic mechanisms of memory, so how these work um, just at a normal physiological level outside of disease, and this was something that interested me because the loss of memory in Parkinson's and other neurodegenerative diseases is some of the most concerning symptoms, I think, uh, for a lot of people. Just this lab is one of the top labs at the University of Toronto, where we have access to the most cutting edge techniques and methods that sort of exist out there in the world. So ultimately, I would like to go back to looking at these things in disease. But I mean, there's lots of other people researching these problems, so it's possible that this, by the time that I'm running my own independent lab, that some of these things are solved issues, which would be, which would be great. And then I will find another, another problem to analyze. Well, here's, you know, the one thing that, that, that kind of jumped at me too, right? Right here, you know, we, we had eight seconds, but you know, we came off the bench and we went back first, right? Like there's a scenario that, you know, just kind of said to me that, okay, maybe we're not quite there right off the bat because you recognize you pick up the ball, you know, they had still guys changing and stuff like that. So I just thought it was, a, you know, we were, you know, second late there and it wasn't nine seconds, 100% it was, if you could do the math on it. But, you know, we should never have even allowed them to get that pass to get over center. One left. Ah, oh, see, I'm on him. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to work tonight again, fellas. Good job. Thanks, Bruce. Yeah. Being a doctor and um, kind of fun, kind of funny because it feeds to his personality. Like, you know, why wouldn't he be? Just based on how I know him playing lacrosse. Like, I can only imagine him being in school or university and his homework or his studying. And um, so, like, when you hear that a guy like that is is successfully is away from lacrosse, it's it's not really not really a surprise. You know, I had uh, uh, an opportunity to uh, coach Mitch um, before here. Uh, uh, we, we acquired him in Toronto. We had him in, uh, in Oakville um, with the Oakville Rock in the summer. And, you know, he's uh, uh, intense. He's driven. You know, he's a competitor and he just competes at, uh, at everything he does. You know, it's a type of personality and a type of player that uh, we just identified him as uh, somebody that um, uh, the type of person and type of player that... Uh, we want it in our locker room. This is a tough league, boys. There's going to be nights when we do what we want to do and we perform how we want to perform and you're not going to be successful. Um, the disappointing thing about Rochester was that we didn't even give ourselves that, uh, that chance. So we got to learn from it. We got to forget about it. It's over and done with. We move on. Focus is about doing what we got to do um, to be good on Saturday night. All right? Good. Come on, boys. Let's have a purpose here. As the holidays approach, it's the annual teddy bear toss game. However, there's no secret. This is all about the biggest rivalry in the NLL as the Buffalo Bandits roll into town to take on the Rock. Two of the biggest rivals in the sport. No holiday cheer expected tonight between these two. That first five minutes here tonight is going to be critical, right? Talked about it with the D guys. These guys love front running. Let's not let them get there. Let's take that first five minutes, and then once we get that, we get the next one, the next one, the next one, right? Go out and leave it all on your line here tonight. 
divisional game. Let's get first place game. Boy, guys. It's like osmosis in the room. When your captain and your coaches start talking about the rivalry and the, the, you know, the dislike for one another, it just starts to sink in and you start to absorb it. As soon as that whistle goes, we don't like them, they don't like us, and um, you know, you see that. Let's get it started right! Let's make some noise! Now played over to Dean Smith, fakes once, cuts towards Rose and scores! And the Bandits on the road! Bit of a stunner. There's a shot, it scores, and the Bandits go up by three. Schreiber moves it over. There's a shot, it scores. Corey Small gets the rock on the board. Five on four power play. Near Schreiber scores. Chance for the Bandits, scores. And now the festivities begin. The next rock goal. Teddy Bears are going to fly. Driver one on one on Sweeting. Takes a shot and scores. Let those Teddy Bears rain down. As you guys can see here, it's our Teddy Bear Toss today. All these bears are going towards United Way. We're donating every single bear to United Way. We weathered the storm, right, boys? Now we're fing got our feet under us. Now we fing go right at them here. They're a good team, but so are we, boys. We can battle back into this here. Boys, we didn't expect this game to be easy, right? But we can be and we can be better at being positive, right? If something doesn't go our way, we're all bitching on the bench, right? We're bitching about the score not being right. We're bitching about calls not going our way, right? Take your pride and go do it for the guy next to you. A little fucking plays here. There'll be an opportunity for us here. They're up 8-4. They're feeling real good about themselves. Let's be real strong in this first five minutes and see where it takes us. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Stack up chefs here, boys. Compete like rock on three. One, two, three. Rock. You're going Texas. Do your thing. So do the Rock have a second half comeback in them? Or will it be the Bandits? Six of the last seven goals. Shot scores! Maybe that's the spark the Rock need. Corey Small from long range. Around the screen, Dan Craig face once, twice, scores! Dan Craig brings the Rock back to within three. And now everybody's gonna come in for a little more festivity. Stand the come off the bench. Come off the bench. Smith is going to change that, tries to push his way to the middle, centering, pass, scores! Dane Smith with a magical setup, and Kyle Buchanan cashes it home. Roll like that as Small has the ball pop out of his stick. And here comes Danikoke, and he's got help. Here's Kluche, in, scores! It's pretty well going to do it. The Bandits are going to take round one of three, and they get their first win of the 2022-2023 season. The Bandits take it 11 to 8. Listen, nobody's going to be helping us, right? Like, the help's going to come from within this room. we got to help ourselves. So, um, so we got to stick together. We need to, uh, to figure this out. And uh, everybody, uh, everybody needs to be better. Coaches need to be better. I need to be better. All of you guys need to be better in your game, okay? And uh, we'll figure it out, but that's where we are. Right? You know, it's important not to uh, uh, not not to veer off course and stick to what you uh, what you believe in and, and uh, don't show any panic. At the same time, a uh, sense of urgency that uh, we know we got to get better. I think that we should uh, be focusing on developing some of that compete that um, maybe we haven't had in tough parts of games so far. Having two losses already, it's time to turn this ship around. It's a long season and you just uh, uh, got to look forward and, and uh, have a focus on uh, being better. Uh, that is uh, the goal and uh, will continue to be the goal throughout the season. Individual experience will only get you so far. A committed team drives everyone further. This team is committed.
signed the 2023 Toronto Rock. See everybody's reaction. You know? All right, let's hope the boys like this. I usually end up loaning out my charger to guys that forget it on the road, so I'm hoping at least uh, one guy won't forget their charger going forward. Oh man, look at this tape here. This is bad. There you go, somebody's gonna be a happy camper after practice. <laughs> Shake it as hard as I can, should, but... It started off as, uh, as Phil's idea. I think uh, Billy told him that Vets would take care of it. Great initiative, poor execution by Phil. He came in there very excited uh, with an idea that was pretty terrible and we need a little, something that's a little simpler. Yesterday, Mitch texted in our group chat and he's just like, so like, should we, should we set up Phil's secret Santa for him or what's going on here? Wasn't very organized and then he was trying to tell some vets how it was gonna go and uh, we obviously uh, put a kibosh on that. So in the group chat, I was like, hey guys, do we wanna like set up Phil's secret Santa thing for him? And I was like, boys, I don't understand what's going on here. Like I was setting it up and then you told me not to and now we're down to the wire, so. Well, I think all the boys got some presents for, for tonight after Pracky, and we'll have a nice uh, unwrapping and hopefully some laughs. It, if you were to ask me if I have confidence of him bringing in a good gift here, I'd probably say no. I think he was, uh, he was complaining about being in Montreal and not having time to go shopping. I would hope he would uh, learn a little lesson here, but you never know with that guy. We like giving him a hard time. Nick, I'm sniping on you today, man. You guys don't miss anything, eh? <laughs> I'm not looking, I'm just trying to... Yeah, you are, you are looking. 19. 19, boys. What do you mean it doesn't count? Are you kidding me? Bro, there's no chance I'm putting it back. Let him have it. Phil Jaden, remember how mad he was? Is it two days ago? <laughs> so every time somebody oh, throws, so Cheesy yeah, throws, okay. number two can either steal from him, right. and if he does, that gift can only go once in that round. Hey. Oh. Don't get lost. Always on the lane. Yeah. 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 Okay, number three. Oh, there we go. There you go, Mark. They're not legal in Canada. Look at the rap count of this one. Holy crazy. It's me, and I want to see you guys in trouble. I don't think that's a right going to be worth the most at the end of our careers. Oh my god. It's a Latrell Harris. Monkey sign card. at least. Monkey card. Tell me a sign. Oh, oh Andy can steal it! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I need it. I'm sorry. Good game though. Uh, Merry Christmas! Except for Phil. Thanks for organizing Phil. Hey, no worries guys. Thanks. Success. All in all success. 30 bucks. It's, nice. it's a nice bottle. It'll do the job. New Year's coming up too, it's good. <laughs>